This here is a snake box trap, a method commonly used to see how many snakes are in a given area. We're here in South Mississippi on a sand hill aptly named the Burrow, where we'll be spending the next few months figuring out exactly what lives here. Y'all remember that fundraiser that we did at the beginning of the year? Well, this is what that went to. Reptile fences and box traps. Well guys, we got the first drift fence set up right here. And as you can see over here in the shade, definitely not a ploy to get into the shade or anything. So basically, box, line, we lift box, we obtain snake. This is what all that money, all that 350, I forgot how much honestly, because I'm, I'm like heat exhaustion. But I have it written down on the screen right now. Keith, this fence, this is the best fence out here. You bought this fence. That donation bought this fence. You are the man, and I genuinely appreciate your donation. And anyone who didn't donate, you don't get to catch a snake like Keith did. So, uh, yeah, that's, that's all I have to say about that. This area is very unique, and is starting to not only be studied, but also managed by the landowners for public outreach and education purposes. Hey, my name is Jordan. And my name is Kezia. And uh, together we run the All You Need Institute, uh, which we sometimes affectionately call the Burrow, uh, so named after all of the uh, burrowing tortoises that we find all across the land. They also teach a lot of workshops. Uh, it's kind of an experiment to ask the question, like what are the different things people need to survive and how can they provide for those needs? I kind of got into this because I think there's uh, often an opposition between human development and restoring ecology. And one day it dawned on me, I heard about people doing work where, why can't you just do both? Yeah, we've been having so much fun over the past five years getting to know the land here. We have all this acreage and we just have a really like interesting ecosystem. It's something that caught our eye from the beginning and we've been falling in love with it more and more ever since. Like, I'm obsessed with all the lichen out here. I just find it to be super magical. There's a lot going on here at the borough, but what I'm here to do is find many of the native species that haven't yet been seen on the property. Only problem is, everything in this habitat spends its time underground, which makes finding anything super difficult. So I decided to use cameras to monitor our trapping to make it go a lot faster. Well, we got our first ding from the camera, and it's a to be expected animal y'all are gonna see him in a second but really good to see it's working good to see that there's reptile movement and very quickly too uh, especially for how few traps we set which we wanted to keep it low profile low impact we always have the chance to see something else just walking out here as well but uh yeah we're gonna go get this little snake out the trap hopefully one of many that we have to come yellow little buddy oh you are not happy huh Hey bud. Well, this is a snake that you guys are probably pretty used to seeing. That is a black racer. Very common species out here. Honestly, dime a dozen. He's got a nice look to him though. You doing good, buddy? He's got a nice white chin there. Sometimes they can have a solid black chin. It just depends on where you get them from. Now, southern black racers in particular are very, very prolific species. They can live just about anywhere. Now, they're a very active diurnal species, so they're going to be out moving on these sand hills during the day or pretty much any other biome. This is kind of an expected first snake. This is what I would expect to see out here. However, they're going to be outcompeted by a lot of the other really aggressive colubrid species out here. You're going to get king snakes, coach whips, all different kinds of snakes, honestly, that will outcompete them on these sand hills. So they're a little bit less seen on these, and it's a little bit more split up between other species. So it's very biodiverse. And that's really what we want to see. Still is a very peculiar little guy. He's got a nice look to him, nice clean look. And he looks a little bit beat up too. He's actually in shed, but uh, he's got a lot of scars and bumps on him. But overall, a healthy snake just looks like he's gotten into some scuffs. So really good to see that our trap line is working out here. Hopefully this is one of many colubrid species that we're going to be getting out here. And hopefully it's not the only solid black snake that we're going to be seeing out here. Because obviously there's quite a few that we're hoping to see. Yeah, I'm gonna, be have to, I'm gonna have to be driving out here a lot to get these guys out of traps, but still, just because they're common, doesn't mean we can't appreciate them. They're a very important part of the ecosystems here, and uh, still an animal to appreciate, still a really cool snake. We're gonna go ahead and let him go back along this trap line, and hopefully the next time we're out here, we'll get something else cool. Really great snake. Hey, little bud. Unexpected yet welcome first snake, but we've got a lot more to find out here. 
On top of snakes, a huge conservation focus here is the gopher tortoise, a large native burrowing species, which is endangered here in South Mississippi. What? A major part of conserving tortoises is knowing how many you have in the first place and where they're going. So I gotta work on figuring out just those things. I got a backpack full of cameras and I'm not afraid to use them. Now guys, don't tell the federal government this, but cameras are a great way to gather large amounts of information very quickly. I started off by setting on just a few burrows that I already knew had activity. A couple of days later, it was time to check them out. All right, well, on this one right now, we've got 317 pictures. Now, a lot of that is gonna be wind and other things that just cause movement around the burrow, but some of these are gonna be the animal photos that we're looking for. So now that I've confirmed that we got some animal photos on this, let's shift over into the shade and look at actually what we've got. <laughs> well, we got a possum picture. See him there. Staring back. Life. No tortoise pictures on this one actually, but we did get mammal and bird photos. And that just goes to show, whenever a gopher tortoise digs a burrow, lots of other things use it. But currently, it doesn't look like that tortoise is even using this burrow. So that's really good for us to realize. He's probably in one of these surrounding burrows because sometimes they'll just dig a couple of them and not use one for a while. So good information to have. Let's go ahead and check the next one. Hopefully we'll have one there. No tortoises yet. But that's just the way it goes. While all the burrows seem to be getting used, it's not always by the tortoise, since they can dig multiple in a given area. While it seems our tortoises aren't out and about today, a ding from the trap camera tells me that we do have some movement. All right, we made it in time. He's using his hide. That's why I haven't gotten a picture of him, I guess, is because he used this, but look at that. Whoa, <laughs> yep, that's why we don't get him. Well, guys, this is our first true sandhill snake that we've gotten from these traps. This is an eastern coach whip. Now coach whips across their range are actually a fairly common snake. You can see them on sand dunes down by the Gulf. You can find them in longleaf pretty commonly in places like Florida. But in this part of Mississippi, this is actually an increasingly rare snake. I would actually have to say that this is one of the rarest snakes that we could have probably found out here. So it's really awesome that this is our first one. I'd say the only one that I'd expect to see less of in a place like this would probably be like coral snakes or scarlet kings. He hasn't bit, but he did open his mouth quite a bit. Now, when I first saw this guy on the camera, I thought he was a racer snake because I only got that upper part of his body. And as you can see, it's solid black, just like a racer. Whereas the other half of him, quite tan. So when I saw that, I knew for a, for a fact that it was a coach whip. Now, these guys are actually pretty good at getting out of traps typically, but this one did not make it out by the time we got over here. That's why we have the camera in there to where I can know to come and check the traps. That way I don't have to come and check them daily. We've just got the, the camera right in there that'll just tell me whenever there's something in here. It's not really an indicator species of any kind. It doesn't really tell us what else is here, but we do know looking at the habitat, what else is gonna be here. You're gonna have diamondbacks, you're gonna have black pines, but what we really wanna know is the species that aren't here. We don't know if there's pygmy rattlesnakes. We don't know if there's scarlet kings. This is our first true sandhill species of the survey. That is an eastern coach whip. Really beautiful thing, really hype snake to see on the camera. That is for sure. And what we're gonna do, I'm gonna go ahead and put him back along the line. And what we're really gonna see is where he goes, what he decides to do, and if he decides to ever go back in this trap again. That'll show whether these snakes here are uh, avoiding the trap or whether they learn it. You know, there's all sorts of little observations to make whenever you catch a snake rather than just the snake itself, but really special animal, and hopefully we end up getting some more of his cousins that live in these sand hills very soon. All right, see you, bud. There you go. And instead of going undercover, this snake went straight up a tree. Not only are these snakes lightning fast burrow dwellers, but they can climb really well. Now that is really cool to see. Something that coach whips can do, that many other snakes and this habitat don't do nearly as well as them. He just went straight up a tree. Now these snakes typically spend their time in burrows. They're not an arboreal species. 
but they're very capable climbers. You can see, the second I let him go, he skipped right over a cover, went straight up this tree. Look how high up he just went. He shot across. probably about 10 feet up now. What an incredible way to avoid predators. He's looking straight down at me, that's so cool. Now one thing that's really special is one of the snakes that they share habitat, the black pine, has actually been seen to do the exact same thing, which is very unusual for a pine snake species. They'll actually climb straight up trees and they've even been found way off the ground in trees, which is really special. There's not too many arboreal species in the sand hill or longleaf habitat, so to see a snake that's capable of climbing that well is incredible, especially for one that spends most of its time underground. I was expecting him to dart towards a little burrow, and that's always something you want to see, you know, seeing where the snake is living. But to see him go straight up a tree like that is just a great example of how athletic these snakes are. I wanted to get one last picture before we left this guy alone. And if he's going up, then I am too. Hey, bud. Honestly, not a terrible shot, all things considered. Alright, now the scene is good. This sand hill is really incredible, and it's going to play a massive role in restoring biodiversity in the surrounding areas that were cleared for timber years ago. And hopefully the info that I'm getting will help Jordan and Kezia in their restoration work. Yeah, the first time we laid foot on this place, we were totally not ready to buy land, but uh, we just saw all these lichens on this white sand hill. We are like, what is this place? This is unlike anything I've ever seen. Like maybe kind of like some spots in Florida. And then we saw the tortoise burrows and we we're like, all right, we're never gonna see anything like this again. Like this needs to be conserved and uh, preserved. And uh, I would love to live here just for my own personal well-being, just going on walks, you know, it's, it's unbelievable. It's, yeah. uh, it's such a blessing to be able to live here. Yeah, we always like have gone camping all around the southeast, and so we really kind of have an eye for what kind of nature was being well taken care of. And we've got so lucky with this piece already being like so well off. And yeah, doing the prescribed burning and everything like that, it's just been, I think, getting better and better. Another fun fact about this habitat, it's pretty much a mini desert. It is crazy dry and feels at least 10 degrees hotter than the surrounding area. It is slightly too hot to be doing this. Would you agree? I'm on my deathbed. Yeah, it's slightly too hot to be doing that. <laughs> I've been trapped here for four days with no water. If, uh, if anyone finds this, tell my family I love them and tell all of my exes. Lol. Back on the tortoise burrows, we're checking some new ones now that seem to have a lot more activity. And I was hoping since the temperatures have been good that we'd see them out in the morning. And sure enough. Ooh. Yay! Turtle photos! Look at that. Yay! Big old turtle! Very active. This is definitely the most active burrow yet. That's what we like to see. We got one turtle. Now it's time to set cameras on all of them out here and see more turtles. One turtle doesn't really do us too much good because, I mean, if you got one turtle, you stay stuck with one turtle. If you've got nine turtles, then in a couple years, you have 50 turtles, you know, basic math. We got some good activity on a few different burrows and not just tortoises. Now that I'm seeing all this mammal life, I'm even wondering if the state endangered spotted skunk might be around somewhere, but that's a project for another day. For now, we got tortoises. One important part of gopher tortoise management is planting what they like and using prescribed burns to bring back native grasses and cacti that they like to eat. Yeah, yeah, I've been doing a lot of thinning uh, lately and really trying to bring this, I mean, you know, you can see in the background, uh, not a lot of ground cover. This was maybe at one point longleaf pine savanna. And we want to bring it back, but we're going to do it slowly. We have very kind of precision forestry methods so that we remove kind of some of the more crooked trees and actually use those. Uh, we do crook uh, timber framing, kind of just in general asking what's the best use of the different resources that we have here. Very hands-on and uh, very low impact on the landscape. Back on the trap lines, we got some great activity. We even crossed out a couple extra species that hadn't been previously seen on the property. Look at corny baby. Gorgeous snake. Nice big orange corn snake. These are actually a very common species throughout their range, but in this area of the south in particular, they can be pretty tough. So that is an excellent snake. 
kiss the corn. <laughs> Oddly enough, the most common catch so far has been speckled king snakes. They are common out here, but it is pretty interesting habitat for them. And being as these absolute escape artists weren't getting out of the trap, I was pretty pleased with the design I came up with. The list of new species to find was shrinking by the week. And while I didn't get there in time to see him since he was so small and just slipped through the trap, we even got a pygmy rattlesnake on camera. Just barely visible. Even though I didn't get to see him in person, it's pretty safe to say that we've got pygmies. Overall, there's still a lot of work to do out here, but we've gotten it started. I really appreciate the support that we get that makes these projects possible. And if you guys did enjoy this video, make sure to check out the video where we helped raise funds for some of the work in this one. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you guys next time.